one. John Raven, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. So, uh, musician, filmmaker, actor. Uh, I, from what I understand, you're on you're on set right now of a of a movie you're working on. Well, it's uh, yeah, I'm on a production trailer. Actually, I've got tarps everywhere trying to keep light off the monitors. Uh, but we're doing, uh, I've actually been producing and directing three projects, two of them remotely due to COVID. Okay. Uh, and uh, then the other one has been on an outside location at an amusement park. So we were we were able to get by with a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's kind of, you know what it's like. The production trailer becomes your hotel room, your kitchen, your, you know. <laughs> so. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, for for simplicity and ease, and maybe uh, budgetary reasons, like why bother? Just just stay in the production trailer the entire time and live out live out the production trailer. Get in, get method, <laughs> and uh, um, the passion of the gods. What's that? I saw that. I saw that name. Is that? Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually, it's a uh, feature animated film that I'm directing. Uh, and we've literally got people all over the world that are working on this. Um, so, and it, it started as a joke, funny enough. Uh, and uh, that that joke has grown, I, I think we just said 80,000 likes on Facebook yesterday. Um, and uh, so uh, that joke has kind of become a 15, 16 hour day project. Uh, but it's actually, it's taking a, a, a combination of Egyptian mythology uh, and or, or Arthurian legend uh, and then throwing in a little bit of Stargate. So we have Morgan from Arthurian legend uh, decides she's going to throw Merlin back in time to get rid of him so she can go after Arthur, you know, uh, and he, he just happens to come out during the, the legendary battle with Set and Horus uh, and are the big twist on it is Horace and Merlin become lovers and so Merlin decides he's going to help Horace get his eye back and then it kind of goes real crazy from there <laughs> <laughs> well I when I when I saw that it, it was uh, I think it was your tag or something the passion of the gods it was uh I thought my first thought was you're taking a mix of the passion of the Christ and hammer of the gods Maybe that could be the sequel, you know, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus gets Milnor or something. That's funny because the, the passion of the gods thing that that was another joke and it was actually uh, musically, uh, my shows have always been very theatrical. Uh, you know, I'm one of those guys, I'll, I'll call up a production manager and go, uh, look, can you, you know, turn some, some stripper poles into crosses and then we're going to crucify some nuns and then they're going to become you know, they're, they're going to rip their habits off and, and dance around the cross, you know. Um, so I, I've always been pretty provocative uh, with my art. And so we literally, the Passion of the Gods was a takeoff on Passion of the Christ because I was like, wouldn't it be great to bump Passion of the Christ out of the search engines, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, search engine. I mean, when that thing came out, it took over, it took over the planet. Yeah. So that's a hell of a goal to, 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 to beat that in the search engine, Passion of the Gods. Hell yeah, man. I love it. Well, uh, uh, John Raven, um, I, I'm checking out your, I, I checked out your site, um, the, the animation and the music. It's, uh, it's dark. I mean, I, I, I was a fan. I was a, to an extent, I was a fan of Black Sabbath, maybe not Iron Maiden or Judas Priest, but I was more of an ACDC kid growing up. But definitely Black Sabbath, you know. I I, I was always fascinated by uh, Ozzy and his theatrics and his and his vision. But um, but yeah, tell me a little bit more about you know what you do. Um, you're, you're on set now. Tell me a little about what what you've been up to, and uh, what's going on right now. Um. All right. Well, aside from Passion of the Gods, uh, I'm also uh, sponsoring. It's an international jazz fest. Uh, which looking at my website, you're probably going jazz. But, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but what's funny in my guitar work and things like that, I, I've always loved jazz inversions. Um, I was influenced uh, heavily. I mean, there's an old saying, the blues had a baby and named it rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, so blues, jazz, uh, m most forms of music I, I really appreciate. Um, you know, not, not really into my dog died country uh, type stuff. 
uh, you know, some of Garth Brooks stuff I like. So I'm, I, I try to be very versatile with what I do musically. And a gentleman named John Taylor had uh, approached me, a friend of mine named Keith Gilcrest uh, has a uh, jazz show that's on four nights a week, three hours. So you can imagine, I know what you have to put into this podcast. And uh, Keith told me about John and then John actually became our merchandise manager for the film. Um, and so as we were talking one day and he said, man, he said, I'm trying to, to, to do that. They normally have this jazz fest live every year. Uh, and because of COVID, uh, they're having to do it remotely. Um, and that's, that's kind of one of my niches. I was, I was producing a lot of music, uh, as a, a music director for television pilots and things like that, and was working remotely with people all over the world. So I was, I was already used to it. Um, and so John was like, man, can, you know, can you help me with this? And I checked out some of the artists and I was like, I'm in, you know, uh, so that, that'll be wrapping, uh, that that's going to come out October 24th. Uh, and it's literally, it's just called International Jazz Fest. Uh, so a lot, lot of, uh, with that, doing the thing remotely, uh, there's been a lot of time spent with, uh, you know, John via me coaching the artist on, okay, we need 4K video. Make sure you've got your camera horizontal, 16.9, you know, uh, all those, uh, watch your headspace, you know, uh, uh, lighting, all of those things. So, uh, and then trying to take, and I'm looking for stock footage and trying, trying to tell the story because a, a live musical experience, and it sounds like you, you love music. And I mean, going to a concert is one thing. I don't care what genre it is. Um, and now with this COVID thing, people are missing that experience and you're trying to think and going, okay, how how can I even come close to making this as, an, as immersive as being there would be? Um, and and it's, it's, it's pretty challenging, uh, really. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but that, that's, that's kind of a big one. And then the other one, I've been doing a lot of uh, social media clips, uh, working with a gentleman named Mark Klein, who uh, he, he has a amusement roadside amusement park called Dinosaur Kingdom 2. Uh, and he's got this crazy storyline where it's literally uh, the the Yankees in the, the Civil War tried to, they, they got this time machine and they bring, they bring dinosaurs into the middle of the war as a weapon of mass destruction type thing. So that that's out there, you know. Uh, so I've been shooting all kinds of crazy clips for him. Uh, and he's, he's, he's known worldwide for what he does. He's got these giant sculptures that, that he does. These dinosaurs are just one thing, but he has stuff at Six Flags. He has stuff here, there, and everywhere. A lot of cities, you know, will hire him to do different things. So, so that's been an interesting project. So, um, and, and then I'm not sleeping. So I, other than that, I don't have much going on. <laughs> you know? Sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is the ultimate high, man. Uh, I think that's like that's that's the ultimate drug is is just depriving yourself of sleep and, and still seeing what you could or what you're able to pull off. <laughs> I think there's something when when you're when you get to that point of delirium. I I, I think and it is ironic that you say that, but I, I I was having a talk with one of the actresses on on the project the other night, and I said, you know, I said there there's it's almost like when delirium kicks in, the those parts of our brain that would normally say, nah, this is too crazy. I'm not going to do this. That goes away. And ironically, you end up with some of your more interesting stuff. And then other mm -hmm. times you end up with stuff that you look at when you finally do get some sleep and you're like, oh God, I got to redo this. You know? right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you been watching anything? Have you been binge watching anything or, or, uh, or I, try, trying to, you know, to be inspired or just to pass um, the time? I, I did in the beginning. Uh, I, yeah. I did a lot of that. I, I try like when I'm I, if I'm producing music, uh, when I'm actually in production, I really I don't listen to very much music because I, I don't want to subconsciously end up borrowing anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of the same with film. I, I probably the closest thing I've been doing to to binge watching is animation renders. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, uh, lot, lots and lots of that. It's like waiting on water to boil, you know. Uh, yeah. So, I, and I have to watch them because sometimes with animation, you know, uh, I, I'm 
when I'm building the animation, it's at 60 frames per second. And then when I go to render and it, it's different as opposed to 24 frames, I use 30 uh, because it's easier once I put it into some of the editing software to match everything up. Um, but I, I literally am having to watch, you know, sometimes 1800, 3600 frames, whatever. And I'm watching to make sure in animation, you can, there's a lot of collision and physics and different things. Uh, that are going on. So I'm watching when a character flips their head back or something that their hair is not going into their face or that I'm making sure I had every little setting correct. And mm. so it, it's uh, that part of it is tedious, uh, just, just yeah. to be honest. There's so much fun about what we do, you know, with the creative process. Uh, but then there's other parts of it that, that it, it's not what people imagine. It, it's about as far from glamorous as you can get. <laughs> rendering? Know? Yeah, rendering? Yeah. Uh, I worked at a news station, and this was before, um, you know, uh, real-time rendering. I worked at a news station where we were putting together, you know, sh small packages to air to air in between breaks. And someone would come in, and we ended up getting T-shirts made. And on the back, it would be rendering, and they, and they would walk in. And if they still had to ask us, we turned around on the front and said, still rendering. <laughs> I love still it. rendering. Stop, yeah. ask, stop asking me. I'll bring it to you when it's done. This shit's rendering, all right? So, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, you know, toward the beginning of the toward the beginning of the uh, uh, the co uh, quarantine, I was just I just started knocking out a lot of projects that I had in the can and didn't have time to edit. So I started doing that, and it would be like edit, edit, and you know the way. And and I'm still stuck on Final Cut, uh, Final Final mm -hmm. Cut Pro X. So. You can keep working; it just won't render. It'll wait for you to stop, and then it'll, it'll start rendering real time. I just kept working, 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 and I'd go upstairs, get a cup of coffee, sit down with the wife and kid. Hour later, go back down, and okay, it's all rendered. Watch it, all jacked up. Just so start re-editing, re-editing. Step away <laughs> for an hour, come back, and you know it was about like you know one day an episode. But I mean, I mean, you know, the systems are faster these days, so. Um, with the exception of these like in-depth animations you're doing and, and uh, these really in-depth animations, I'm sure it's just hours upon well, hours. It, upon hours. It, it's, it's crazy because you get into, uh, it has a lot to do with graphics card sizes. So in different things, which I have a very good one. Um, but you're, you know, sometimes your, your mind and, and I, I, you know, I was impressed with a lot of your work as a director. I was looking some things up. And you know, sometimes you, you can look at a script and you have this vision. Um, and even with the technology we have today though, you know, I'll be setting up a scene and if you've got a graphics card that say is an eight gigabyte graphics card and all of a sudden you look up and you, you've got so many elements in the scene that the scene's 10 gigabytes worth of polygons, you know, you, you got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so. yeah. Um, so there's that that constant, you know, too. And I was trying to explain that to somebody. Funny enough, that I met through the guy Mark I was talking about, and they were asking me questions about it. And I said I, I really spend as much time doing math as I do creating images. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forget what it was. I was I was trying to patent like a time code calculator. You know, I was thinking about like coming up with a with an app to calculate time code time code calculators. And then you can even adjust it if it's a 24 frame per second project, 30 frames, 60, whatever. Because it's like, okay, if I have to adjust this clip to match another clip, I, I can't even remember now because it, it seems like, you know, Final Cut kind of just eases these things a little bit. But um, Final Cut 7 back then, it was like, we just, I remember. I would, I would, th there were certain things I would have to match up and I would just, I would have to speed it up like, all right, let's just speed it up 101%. Still not in sync, speed it up 102%. Wait for it to render. Still not in sync, speed it up 103%. And 04, 05, 06. And then have to wait for it to freaking render after that. I was like, why don't we just, what if we had a calculator, a time code calculator? And I think they have one, but I don't, I, I don't know. I, if they do, I haven't seen it if they do, um, but then I'm, I, I'm going to I'm going to date myself here a bit. And it's so funny talking about these things because uh, my my first project that I did behind the camera 
uh, I was working on a uh, documentary called Destination. Or, well, actually, there was two documentaries. There was one called Destination Dan Ang, and there was another one called The Coochie Tunnels, which was uh, about the, the tunnels that the Vietnamese had during the Vietnam War. Um, and so these were back, this was back in the days when cut and paste literally meant you were running the film through the machine, you're cutting it, you're pasting it back together. Mm-hmm. You know, then, then once we did all the film cut, then you would go to a video production house and have the, the film transferred to video. Uh, and then after that process, then you had your offline edit. And then after that, then you went to an online edit with A and B roll, sometimes maybe a C roll. Uh, depending. Um, and so it, it's funny now because we're sitting here talking about the time involved, but then I think back to those days and I'm like, you know, this, this isn't bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's like definitely okay. don't have to worry about chopping your fingers off with the computer right. now. <laughs> you, know? I, I, my, you know, my previous guest, we were talking about reel to reel and you had to, it was, you know, now editors do have to have like not only a creative mind, but a technical mind as far as rendering time code, frames per second, gigabytes, RAM, uh, you know, hard drive space, all that stuff. But when we were doing reel to reel, you had to, you had to tape, you, you had to do your splice and you had to do your tape and it technically efficient for it to run through the reel correctly instead of jumping, skipping, snapping. And so I, what was there like double side? I think, you know, we taped double side maybe or yeah. it was like, you know, tape, tape, Yep. And it was, it was, it was a blast. I, my very first, you know, student film was reel to reel. My second student film, we shot on film and digitized and then just digitized all the film. And then it was, and then from there, and I think my third film was shot on film. The film was digitized and, you know, you could pull exposure, you could pull color if you wanted to go and sit there during the transfer. But then it was all, you know, I think, remember, do you remember media 100? Sort of, yeah. It's been a long. It's been a while. Well, yeah. Avid, Avid beat out Media One Hundred, and then I, and then Final Cut, and then and then Final Cut, and then Premiere, and then I think there was what was it, Vegas? Yeah, I, I remember Vegas. I don't think That's Vegas. Funny. I don't think Vegas kicked off like Final Cut or Avid did, uh, no. or 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 Premiere. No, it, it's really. I, and what's funny too, when you talk about editing and and the, the different things. I, I've got all the professional software and, and stuff, but there's times, there, there's one that I'll use, uh, CyberLink PowerDirector. Uh, and it, and it's, it's very, very basic compared to what we're talking about. But there's times, you know, it's like the right tool for the right job. It, it's, it's basic, but it gets it done. And I'm not dealing with all of the stuff that I would say in a, a professional program. Yeah. Um, so if I'm just trying to do something quick, like, like the equivalent, now, I, I, you know, just doing an offline cut, uh, that type of thing. A lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll use amateur software uh, just, just because, funny enough, at times it speeds up the process. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. uh, so, and talking about reels, did you, did you ever have a reel take off on you and, and you've watched like tons of work and all of a sudden you just see the tape going into like hundreds of pieces? No. <laughs> that's a bad experience man yeah I that's bet. one thing you don't have to worry about now either nope you know i we well one cool thing though about real to real machines you never had to let an update tell it that it was a real to real machine that was one good thing about them <laughs> you know? yeah it's like you're a real to real machine you're gonna talk to the board you're gonna you know because that, that's the other crazy thing like windows i, I use windows 10 so Windows can do an update, and then there's times the or, or you know say there's a graphics card update or something, and then the the people who produced I, I'm using iClone like I've, I've got a, six different softwares that I'm using, um, but primarily iClone quite a bit, um, and so sometimes Windows or the graphics card or somebody doing it, it will do an update they haven't done an update yet or vice versa, and then all of a sudden you go to put your screen on it and instead of the normal workspace that you're used to looking at it's like this jumble puzzle mm-hmm. you know so you know so in that way i miss the real to reels <laughs> yeah and, and and to touch upon you know like using really simple free cheap like even iphone software I, there was a there was a point where i was out of town i was actually overseas on a number of occasions but i had to like 
you know, just for just for promotion purposes and YouTube, you know, keeping content fresh or whatever, I would just, you know, slap, you know, like a 60, sec uh, 60 second, you know, two minute, one minute, two minute thing together real quick on these little little things. There's so many bells and whistles they don't have that, that I was missing on, you know, Final Cut Pro X on my on my Mac. But I was like, hey, listen, we're overseas. It's like this mobile version. You know, it's like this mobile promo of us overseas doing this, that, and the other. Simple, very simple text, very simple um, transitions and filters, slap it together, four or five shots, boom, little promo. And then when I got home, it was kind of like the bigger, better extended cuts, if you will, but on the better software. Right. So you're back on set. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. You were going to say something? Oh, no, I was actually going to say the irony to what you're talking about, too, is sometimes, and it'll surprise, those little things that you throw together real quick, like that on social media, and you're, as, as a professional, you're thinking, oh, God, you know, this, this, it, and we're thinking, you know, this is garbage, I could have done this, I could have done that, blah, blah. and it, that's the one that ends up blowing up on social media. Yeah. You know, so yep. there's no rhyme, you know, no rhyme or reason. Absolutely. And so, you, you, yeah, go ahead, brother. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Those, those are usually the things that blow up on social media. But um, you know, I, but what I was I was going to start touching upon is you're back on set. But uh, in the last six months, how how would you say you were impacted by the quarantine, shelter in place, lockdown? Um, yeah, I I think I've been impacted more hearing what a lot of my friends in the, the industry are going through that we're not accustomed to working remotely. Um, so I, I had already, uh, you know, like, and, and where I really got it down to a science was the last uh, television pilot I did. Like I was working with Robert Plant's guitar player uh, over in England. And then I had people in Australia. I had people in New York. I had people in LA. And I was actually at Screen Gems uh, down in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, and so, and, and, you know, television is a crazy pace. It's not like film, you know, okay. film, film, you get to take your time a little more and you're, you know, t television's boom, 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 let's get it done. Um, and so, you know, fortunately I had went through that experience and learned a lot from it. Um, and ironically, uh, we started the passion of the gods in February. Um, and because of some of the characters, are, you know, there are a lot of wonderful actors with dialects, um, but, you know, we wanted people, you know, so basically other people from our Arthurian legend, I'm, I'm casting English people, uh, frankly, because I just don't feel like the, the spending the time on blown takes over, over a lack of continuity with a, a dialect. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, I, I, was, I was fortunate because I was already starting. Uh, a project uh, that, that was being done remotely. Now, one one big effect that it did have, like everybody, income wise, it, it's taken a hit uh, because those little things that, that we do on the side. You know, you, you might go out and shoot a commercial for a car dealership. You might uh, you, you might shoot a commercial for a restaurant. You might shoot whatever whatever it is. Um, and when COVID hit. One big thing that I noticed, um, and I don't necessarily agree with it, I, I, I think there's ways to do it, but people are afraid. So a lot of people are not spending money on advertising right now. Uh, a lot of the, the clients, uh, you know, pr promoting musical events and things, you, you're, you're not shooting commercials going, you know, Friday night, kiss, one show only, blah, blah, blah. None of that's happening because nobody's doing a show. Um, so uh, it, it's really, I, I'll tell you, man, I've never seen anything, um, and, and I, I've literally, I've done this my whole life. I've never had a day job. Um, so uh, my entire career, and I remember talking to, uh, I, I used to work a lot with Frank Capra Jr. before he passed away, who was at a BUE Screen Gems in Wilmington. Um, you know, Adam Work, who was my acting coach, uh, he had been a contract player with Universal. Um, and I remember meeting some of the older actors through them. Uh, and they would talk about, you know, during the Depression, 
uh, lots of times before, and, and they all used to joke. They said, you know, they said during the Depression, they said there were three things that still made money. They said that was entertainment, prostitution, and booze. Um, you know, uh, but COVID has been a different animal, and COVID, COVID has had a, a just devastating effect, I think, on our industry overall. So have I felt it? Yes. Um, but I'm at least fortunate enough to be working. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And and just hearing just hearing the success stories and the and the perseverance and and you know I've mentioned this a, a, a million times before on the show, but you know I feel I, I'm I definitely feel blessed that I had some sort of hindsight or some sort of I'm, I'm I was somehow blessed with the idea to prepare have a fallback. You know everyone says like you know actors that have a fallback, filmmakers that have a fallback, they're going to fall back on that. But I but I was adamant about having a number of fallbacks still within film tv audio video live stream broadcasts of some media of some sort and you know building you know having a small little studio in the basement to, we, we tried the podcast twice before and failed and it's like now is the opportune time and it's actually getting traction i'm actually you know getting a whole slew of phenomenal guests including yourself that even whether you're on, whether you're back on set, a lot of folks are back on set and still doing the show. Um, a lot of folks aren't, and they want to, you know, get exposure. They want, they want to talk about it. But and it's, it's just having had that sort of sense to maybe doomsday prep my career is <laughs> not, not only, not only for the family and for safety and survival, but like uh, work survivability as well. And, and and doomsday prep this career. What if you know, and, and I don't think it was ever in my mind, like, you know, a quarantine or anything like that. I think I, what's funny is I think it was more in my mind, like, I know me and the girlfriend are going to get engaged and married and, 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 and want to have kids. So try to set something up. Yeah, man. But try to set something up to where I can stay home more and work remotely. And, you know, thank God I did that because that's been the main thing. That's been it, sounds like you listen, it sounds like you listen to your gut, which, <laughs> you know, yeah. which I think in this, in this business, you can't beat that actually in any business. Uh, so, I mean, but yeah, it, it's, uh, that's very cool. When you talk about that, that backup plan, you know, Adam work, that was my acting coach. He used to, when he would audition people for the film actors lab, which probably the most famous alumni from there was Lou Diamond Phillips. And uh, and Lou, Lou was a, a trip. He's still a trip, but he, he was just just wonderful. And we used to crack up with Adam because when he would audition new students to see if he was going to take them or not, um, the first thing he would ask, and he was brutal on this, and he would ask people, and he would go, "Okay, if you don't make it in this business, what are you going to do?" And and it was a trap because as soon as they said something else, he would go, okay, you go do that. Cause he said, I'm going to work with students that are serious. Nice meeting you. So, you know, there, there's that side of it. Um, but where you've been very intelligent, I think is, is there are, there, there's a, there's so much new media out there now. Yep. Uh, you know, virtual reality has opened up pony doors, um, you know, social media, it's, it's kind of its own animal. Uh, you know, the, the streaming industry has changed uh, a lot of how, you know, now you don't really have a pilot season. Used to, you, you had, you know, three or four months that everybody was scrambling. And if you didn't get picked up then, you, you pretty much were screwed. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, what, what's cool now is if you have a creative mind, and, and I think there's a great saying, and I, 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 think, I can't remember if it's the Marines or the Army, but they say adapt and overcome. Um, and I and I think if you can adapt in today's market and you're you're not stuck in one spot and you're you're doing what you're doing, you're looking at okay, this is my skill set, this is what I do, you know. So this might not be what I had planned, but I can do this and I'm still doing what I love. Yeah, yeah, and you know, j just having a small little technical expertise in live streaming, I'm then taking that expertise and putting it into a podcast 
But then I'm learning more, experimenting with my podcast. I can take that back to the corporate and get even better clients and, you know, get, you know, better day rates, week, week rates, salaries, et cetera, with better clients and bigger, better gigs. And then when the floodgates open, I can take all that and then even, you know, maybe like think outside the box and say, hey, what if we did a feature film, but we did it totally different and, and then things start interweaving. The days, the days of the phrase jack of all trades, master of none, that's over now because there's so much adaptability and there's so much new technology out there that anybody can hold a cell phone. Any Joe Schmo can be a social media guru. But they I, can, I don't know. I was struggling with the <laughs> cell phone year earlier. <laughs> they had a bid for your help. It's pretty bad. I, I, I can I can operate like it took you two minutes. Television cameras to read them. It, it took Not you two minutes. I, I felt like a <laughs> no man. This no. guy's a schmuck over here. So what am I doing <laughs> with this guy? For a he didn't work a cell phone. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Not, it, only, it only took you two minutes because at the because look, it, all, you know, um, you could have just been like, hey, let me call you back. You go on YouTube. How the hell do I use Zoom on my iPhone? Five minutes later, you call me back. I got it. I got to figure it out. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, there's so much information out there. Yeah. That, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, that's funny. You talking about YouTube. If, if people knew uh, between web tutorial videos for software and just, just about the time you go, oh, I got this, man. I know what I got it down. And then they'll do an update and they add 20 new things. And then, you know, it's 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 exactly what you're, you're constantly having to educate yourself constantly. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, uh, I'm not I'm definitely not a jack of all trades. I'm a jack of a whole slew of them to where I can stay afloat. Mm -hmm. you know, way, way above float. You know, I'm, I'm, we're living comfortably. We're very happy. Um, we have no concerns right now. Anyway, even during these times, we, me and the wife, we really don't have any concerns. Major, major, serious life, financial threatening concerns. So, um, yeah, you know, a jack of a whole shitload of trades, a master of maybe one or two, but, um, but uh, what's what, so you, we got passion? We got the passion of the gods. Um, we got the we got the international jazz fest. What else is on the agenda? What's 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 next on the agenda? Next set of goals for say six months to a year from now. Okay, that's that's really a funny. I, I'm, I'm I'm probably going to give you the answer you are absolutely not expecting, <laughs> but. I, I was actually talking to one of my actors, the guy Keith that I was talking about. He's playing Anubis for us. And, and Keith's got one of those really heavy duty kind of James Earl Jones, Darth Vader type voices, which was just perfect for that character. And, uh, and, Keith, and, and Keith has this thing that he'll do with me when, when we're talking about John, 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 what, what, man, you're crazy, you know. And, and I actually, I told him because I'm, I'm fortunate with the. You know, it's funny, the last television pilot I did uh, was a biographical thing of, about a woman who had been a stripper and had seen a lot of bad stuff and then came out of it. And, uh, so I was I was worried. I was one of three guys on a set of about 20 gorgeous women. Um, I'm getting to work with some really beautiful people on this. Uh, and so I was laughing. I told Keith, I said, you know, most people fantasize about getting to work with beautiful actresses. I said, I'm, I'm fantasizing about personal time and sleep. Uh, so hopefully in six months to a year, I'm going to be taking about a six month to a year hiatus. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's kind of the hope. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, you know, when you're, when you're any, any feature uh, is, is, uh, and I'm also acting and doing doing parts in this as well. So it, there's any any feature, anybody that's ever experienced that, you, you've got to kind of have that time to recharge the battery and, yeah. and then do some of that binge watching you're talking about for inspiration and, and uh, go out and, and remember that there's a real world, you know, out there and meet people and experience new things and I think as an artist, that's crucial. So, um, so that's my. I, I hope to be sitting on a beach somewhere. You know, <laughs> that, that's the plan right now. And then after that, we've got uh, we've got already several uh, spinoffs and prequels uh, and different things that we're we're looking at with uh, the characters from Passion of the Gods. I mean, the the funny thing was the the 
the success of this that we've had so far, I mean, I've, I've got, and, and I know you, you know how this goes. I, I've got friends that have worked on big budget films um, that aren't bringing in 10,000 people, 12,000 people a month on their Facebook pages. They, they're not getting 100,000 plus views on things. They're not. Um, and literally, I thought this idea was so out there. I told my partner, I said, look, I, I, I mean, I, we, we had some I, kind of original design ideas and different things. And I said, I, I, said, I, I said, look, I'll, I'll build a Facebook page. And I said, well, let's spend, you know, 25, 50 bucks on advertising. I said, if we even get a thousand people, I said, then, then we'll do a script. Um, and then 10,000 people later, I was going, oh, okay, I guess we need a script, <laughs> you know, so um, by the time we get finished, we're, we're probably going to be about two years into this. Um, and, and again, you know what it's like, it, it's six days, seven day weeks, sometimes 12, 15, 16 hours a day. Um, but you get out, yeah, film is, a, film is a, a tricky master. You get out of it, what you put into it. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to take a break and then it'll be literally just furthering the branding, uh, with this more. And it, it's really cool because we we've had so, so many, we've got fans from all over the world now and we get messages all the time with them wanting more. Um, and it, and it's one of those funny things because, and it, and I'm sure you've seen this, you've been around the block. I think so many people are so scared of success uh, that they, they sabotage themselves. So if they finally do get a shot at writing the lightning, they, they, they burn out or they get stupid and self-destructive or any multitude of ways to screw it up. So just as important as it is to kind of have those blinders on like a racehorse in this business and, and always be going forward, you, you, I, I think it's important to know when to pull the reins back and go, okay, if we don't let this horse rest, it's going to break its leg in the next race. <laughs> you yeah. know? So that, that, that's about where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, you know, in the first, in the first couple of months of this, I was editing, 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 hands on, hands on podcast, podcast, uh, writing, prepping, shot listing, outlining, scripting, um, edit, uh, go, um, shot. Yeah. And all that stuff. And, and then it got to a point where there's a whole, there's a whole slew of projects that I had that there's, they're so far prepped out now that it's like, I can, I can pull back a little bit. I can maybe experiment with the unreal engine and start dabbling in that and, and take my time with that. And, uh, you That's know, a fabulous program. And, it's really good. and I haven't even begun I started looking at, you know, some of the free stuff that's out there doing to, to all the free plugins and the, the free add-ons. I haven't even started. I'm take I'm just taking my time. Um, you know, as far as like the, uh, the corporate industrial stuff, the, the, the paid up front stuff is number one. And, you know, the podcast is like number one and point number 1.5. And then every, and, and the kids, obviously the wife and the kids are number one. And, and then just, kind of slowing down and, oh, I got a free couple of free hours. I'm going to, you know, maybe work on a couple of um, scripts um, or uh, some of these little short scripts for this web series. They're really short. So like do some editing of this dialogue. Uh, I got I, I got a whole day. Okay. Maybe I'll start looking a little bit more into the unreal. And then the second, the wife's like, Hey babe, you want to come upstairs and, and watch a movie and play with the kid? I'm like, yep. Like, let me just, let me just do that. Cause that's, that's what this whole thing was about for me setting up and kind of prepping for this quarantine was to be able to work from home and be hands-on and, you know, be real close, be, be real close and, and very connected with the family. So now I almost, almost kind of burnt myself out maybe in May. I thought with the quarantine, I'm going to have so much time to do so much stuff, podcast, uh, you know, season three, fours and fives of the, of the web series, uh, you know, editing this, write a bunch of scripts, and I'd never been busier, you yeah. know, with, with the, with the virtual, uh, with the virtual conferences, the corporate and industrial virtual conferences. And, uh, and then being a dad, you know, we're, we're first, we're first time parents. He's seven months old now. And, oh, wow. and just, it's like, I've never been busier in my life and I couldn't be happier. And it's, you know, I, I wish everybody could be this blessed and, and be this fortunate. But like I said, it, and like you said, it's just, um, 
trying new things, experimenting. If you're going to have a fallback, have a fallback within that still that small arena that you want to maintain. If you want to be an actor, but you're not getting any acting work, start, you know, booking PA work on set. Yeah, as a production assistant, learn, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, I, and I mean, I, you know, and it's funny because I, I remember one of my, uh, and I was doing a lot of stunts at the time. Um, 1984, I was U.S. Taekwondo champion. Um, so that, that opened a lot of doors. Um, but when I wasn't in front of the camera, uh, you know, uh, I, I never did PA, but I, I ended up, I, I did, I started gripping. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, from gripping, it went to, you know, best boy grip and, and key grip, and then, uh, ended up gaffing on some things. Uh, and one step led to another, and then the next thing I know, I was directing national television commercials. So, I, I mean, I was really, really fortunate uh, with the path that I took because in taking that path, I mean, really the only thing that I haven't done is is wardrobe and makeup and, and construction. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, no, yeah. Uh, so, um, so it's really cool when you, I, I, I think any industry that you're going to go into, and, and I see that a lot with people coming into entertainment is, you know, they'll, they'll watch a behind the scenes, you know, I, all of the stuff that you get, Neil, you know, there's, there's the, the, the making of little, little snippets and things. And, and I literally, and I kid you not, and it took everything I had not to go off on this guy on Facebook because. He had made a post in one of the professional groups and he said, what's the best YouTube video to watch to become a director? <laughs> okay. There is. And, and, I'm sitting, and I'm looking at this going, are you freaking kidding me? You know, <laughs> like, it, it was funny what I held back, like about four other, you know, uh, guys that have really been around the block and have some impressive right they, they pretty much said everything i was thinking so um but you know this has got to be one of the few industries i think this is the music business where you you will have people try to come in that have no background no experience no and and they're like but they're going to be upper management overnight it's like it, that doesn't happen right you know and so um it goes back to that fall but man it, People need to do their homework, learn about your craft. You know, if there's an opportunity to get on set, who cares if you're not the director? Get on set and learn, you know? Yeah. And, of course, I mean, listen, I, I've done, even recently, I've done PA work. I've done AC work. As long as it's paying and it's a decent day rate. Man, right I'm, now, you're <laughs> blessed to be working. I'm blessed yeah. to be working. I mean, I, I you know, I, I've got a friend that manages many kids. Uh, and he's been posting some different things, uh, and you know it, it's killing me to see a lot, a lot of things around the country due to COVID. There's like a lot of the the old landmark uh, venues in Nashville. They're shut down permanently now. Uh, there's just no coming back from this. Like the Roosevelt Hotel shut down in New York yesterday. I mean, what a landmark! It's gone. Yeah. Um, you know, so you, you know, it doesn't take long looking through your Facebook feed to like sit back and as bad as it. And I think it's so cool how you're talking about your family. Now that that's one way this has been devastating for us because my wife's from Australia, um, and we got a thing from the State Department, you know, and it's uh, okay, 24 hours for for family members to go home. Da 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 da. So she was on the phone with the airlines. Four hours later, the prime minister of Australia shut down all the airports. So yeah. that was never happened. So she's still stuck over there, like trying to file for exemptions and things so that she she can get back. So she's stuck over there now. Yep. Oh, geez, man. I'm sorry. sorry yeah, it's, been, it's, it's been a while. So, it, it, so it, I'm even more thankful to have this project going on with projects going on because it, it's kind of helping me stay sane. Yeah. Um, you know, so there, there's not just that side of it. And I'm not the only guy in the business dealing with that. I mean, a lot of us travel a lot. And so, you you, you know, love doesn't always get into geography, you know. So yeah. um, so it's not just, you know, and, and you know this as an artist and a creator, you know, your your personal headspace has a lot to do with what, what you're putting out. Um, you know, now that's not saying you, you had commented earlier and yet yeah, it is. A, a lot of my art is, is very dark. 
Um, but I was one of those guys. I, I, I think when I was five or six years old was the first time I saw Dante's help. Uh, and I was like, man, this is awesome. You know, uh, and Edgar Allan Poe was, was a huge uh, influence on me. Um, so I, I've always been like vampires. I, I you know, uh, I, I always refer to it as kind of the beautiful side of evil. You know, there's this, this whole seduction thing that's going on. Um, so I, I was just always drawn to that, but I, I definitely think some of the stuff that I'm rendering and as I'm producing it and, and my, my cast has got to know that side of me, I, I think it's interesting how life can, it, it, at times, the, the crappiest things can happen, but they make your art better. So that's the irony of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what we take inspiration from. I mean, um, people with people with trauma in their life, they, they, they turn that around and they, and they put that into their, their emotional, their, their emotional vessel for acting or they write it. I mean, you know, everything that Stephen King, like you're talking about horror and you're talking about, um, you know, dark stuff and Stephen King, you know, struggle with cocaine and alcohol, cocaine abuse, cocaine addiction and alcohol abuse. He wrote about it and he recovered, but he wrote about those dark moments. And when he was just a raging lunatic and he wrote about that and just about every other Stephen King product has a writer that's, um, you know, that has demons mm -hmm. or, 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 uh, you know, some, sometimes the, Sometimes the filmmaker who adapted it changed it, changed it to a screenwriter or a filmmaker or an artist that has demons. And then the, and then, and then the, and so the writer or the filmmaker of that story made the main character, someone with demons. And then in that story, that character is writing about something. It's like, it's like a, a person with demons within a person with demons. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's like, like multi, it's like multi, multi-layered, multi retrospective on you know these this darkness and and so like here we are and 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 not to not to sound unsympathetic but listen the whole the whole travel ban with your wife i mean that's a movie that's a miniseries you know uh I mean, you're not the first person to say and, and you know and as an actor, you know, you would know this, it's so much easier to play against type, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it just really is. It's like Alan Rickman, he always played these wonderful villains. I, I met him a couple, probably one of the sweetest people you could have ever met, uh, you know, uh, and so, yeah, I, I one, of, one of my big jokes, and it almost sounds, I, I've seen a meme similar on Facebook, but uh, it was kind of talking about this inner demon thing in art with, with somebody the other day. And I said, you know, I said, you do really, I said, as an artist, I, I said, you, you, I, I think you have to get to the point where you got to be okay enough with your demons that you just turn around and name them. And right now for me, that's fashion of the gods. Um, <laughs> you know? yeah. um, so I, it, it's, there, there's a certain point where, and I think it's anything in life. You, we, we can have that conflict and we can constantly, uh, be battling with ourselves uh, and uh, going, well, should I say this or should I not say that? Or, and I'm not talking about political correctness. I'm talking about artistically. Um, you know, and, and so there, there's that element that society brings to us where, you know, well, man, I, I, I shouldn't have wrote that. That's that's a really screwed up scene, you know, that that's, you know, or, or whatever it is. But I, I think you have to come to a certain point where, as an artist, you have to accept yourself with the good and the bad and the ugly and the dark and the light and be cool with all of that. And then, and then when you can get to that point, your, your work becomes much more three-dimensional. It really does. Um, but, but everybody has a different path to getting there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If there was, uh, if there was, well, we, we, we kind of touched upon, we kind of touched upon it a little bit, but what's your view of the new normal? What's what what people are calling the new normal? What's what's your view on that? What's your take? Um. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll start with a cliche: if common sense was common, everybody would have it. Um. So, um, I I, I think that there is so much BS coming from both sides. Uh, 
of this. And it's like most things. I, I, I think uh, the new normal, and it's just my opinion, I, I think the new normal that would probably work best for everybody is, is probably somewhere in the middle. I don't think it's an extreme thing over here and I don't think it's an extreme thing over there. Um, but, uh, and it's not just our country. I, I think we're feeling it more obviously because this is our country, but the, the polarization is worldwide. It's, it's not just here. Uh, the, the actress is playing Morgan in this. She literally, a couple of weeks ago, we had something scheduled and there, there were protests going on there. Uh, you know, down, down the road from my wife in Australia, there were protests going on there. Uh, and I'm seeing a, a lot of people on Facebook that I know that are highly intelligent people that are, that are on my friend's thing. Um, you know, they're very nice people. Um, but then I'm seeing some, and I'm, yeah, I've told them this to their face, so I don't care if they see this or not, but I'm seeing a lot of unintelligent, nasty things, uh, that are being said, uh, concerning this new normal. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I can honestly say, I, you know, I said it on the business end, so on the personal end, I've never... I've never seen, I've traveled all over the world many times over. I've never seen anything uh, like this. Never seen anything like this in my life. And I've, I've been in some pretty hairy places. Um, and where, where you, it's kind of that prep plan you're talking about. There, there were certain locations if we knew we were going to be in and things like that. You know, you had a security team. You prepped. You were planning ahead going, okay, this could happen and that could happen. And this is this is the plan for this. And um, I I, I think for most people, this caught them so off guard uh, and so unaware um, that I, I think the new normal, I, I think for everybody, uh, I think the hard thing with it, I, I literally think this has caused like, I, I, I'd, I'd hate to be a psychiatrist and see how many new cases of PTSD are coming in from this thing, uh, you know, from people that aren't used to isolating from yeah. from that lack of social contact from the lack of um so all, right, all of that being said to be honest um i i really I don't, I don't know what to think other than um i, I think you got to have some common sense i mean uh you know it's one thing if, if i'm gonna have to be uh you know say say if something came up and it was allowed and I, I had to be in a boardroom with 20 people tomorrow and it's one of these cramped little hotel ballrooms or not ballroom meeting rooms mm -hmm. uh, or whatever and i'm gonna have people stacked right on top of me yeah damn skippy i'm gonna have a mask on brother you know um, and it goes back to almost the old meet and greet days on tour. You know, uh, it used to be a joke about road calls. Everybody, you know, you're an idiot. Your first tour, people are coming up and you're shaking hands. Um, and then you're always sick, you know, and you can't figure out why. And then you finally figure out and you go, man, I don't know where those people's hands were five minutes ago. <laughs> you know, I don't know why. Um, so then you, you start fist bumping everybody, you know, yep. or the, the fingertips, you know, mm -hmm. um, so it's it, it, for me, it's kind of a similar thing. Um, so it, it's I, I think if if people would just calm down and use a little common sense and start being nice to each other, uh, I, I think this new normal thing would be a whole lot better. I, I guess is the best way to, to in the answer to that question. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I I, I can I can't agree more. Uh, last night the wife had a uh, like a Zoom happy hour, a little social zoom thing with some work buddies and you know a couple of glasses of wine and and she was just really levitated by that and she came down and and last night i had uh you know every you know maybe once a week or once every other week i have a round table on this podcast with it with it with the same one or two um colleagues of mine and we just and and, and it's a little bit differently formatted than say uh this episode with you but we have cocktails and we and we drink and we laugh and it's a little bit more vulgar language with the round tables because it's the same group of guys with these round tables. We're always, uh, you know, discussing current affairs and, and what we watch. And now it's October. So, of course, we're talking horror movies. We're talking fall and autumn and, and horror movies. But, um, you know, she came down and she was just so levitated by her little social thing just on Zoom. 
And, and I think, you know, she mentioned isolation. She goes, you know, we've been so isolated. And, and I, and, and to me, I don't think I have, I, I think I've been very much closer to her and, and our kid. And we do make it, make our way out to, you know, some shops where we social distance and wear, wear masks, but we do get, we do get food um, at some certain places that still have that green light on Yelp right? Um, or on their way or, or through, through other, through other uh, social media means, we know that these places are still green lit for, you know, eating outside on their, on their huge social distance deck and so on and so forth. So we do do that once in a while. We go on white walks and hikes, but you know, the isolation she's been dealing it, dealing with it differently than I have. And to see that she was so elevated by that. And, and then, and so I realized, you know, I've been doing that with this show and You're I've right. been doing that. And, and, and especially the round tables. Well, I, I haven't been drinking much, I haven't been drinking as much as I used to during this whole quarantine, maybe for the first couple of months, I got a, I got a whole quarantine dad bod. So I got to work that <laughs> off. You know, someone's like, man, you got a dad bod. I was like, plus corn plus quarantine. I love, oh, dude, I'm going to steal that a dad bod. That's funny, dude. Quarantine dad bod. That so it's, it's, it's double, it's double the, double the fluff. So, uh, so but, you, you got to get, that's a t-shirt. <laughs> you you, you got to get an online merch store with that. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, so I try to cut down the drinking, but like, this is like my little social happy hour with my buddies once mm -hmm. a week. But then again, my, the creative juices and, and, and that producer that we got to film, let, let's film it and let's make this a part of the show and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And so, okay. you know, like, you know, it, it, it right. might be, it might be kind of entertaining if she recorded her social happy hours and put it online somehow like people might get a trip out of it people might think it's ridiculous but it, you know what's funny though i i think that it's fabulous for doing that because people are social animals yeah. they really are uh you, you know um and i i think it, it's kind of like talking about the concert thing uh you know um there's just nothing like that that energy and part of that energy it comes from that group of people coming together that all happen to love that same thing uh and are sharing that with each other and and i think people i think people are really missing that and what you're saying about you and your wife it does it's i think it has to do with somebody's you know character makeup and their personality and all those things how they how they deal with it um but it's it's been um, Australia actually has been far worse than anything we've dealt with here. You know, I've heard people complain, and my wife is in Melbourne, um, which they they have had probably the the most extreme lockdowns of anywhere in the world. Um, to to the point actually, and, and in fact, it's true that they they were looking at dealing with the fact that they were violating international law uh, with some of the ways that they were doing things. Um, so they, they actually had a health minister just step down uh, that had, had gotten a little too extreme in different things. And like for her, you know, when you were talking about your wife dealing with it different, she, they, they have a thing over there where they cannot go more than five kilometers from their home. Um, and they literally, you could not cross, you know, the, their state lines there. Uh, and that type of thing. So one of her sons actually is across the state line. So even though they're not that far from each other, they haven't seen each other now in, I, I want to say about, well, since I think when they really locked it down, was, it would, would have been the end of May, 1st of June, uh, somewhere in the year. So without that FaceTime thing, so they, they do that, you know, she and I do it every day. Um, I, I think I think without this technology right now, I, I you know I, I think it would be disastrous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if, what did this happen in the eighties? Oh, forget about it. Yeah. Oh my god. Like yeah. long distance calls and just trapped in the house and in it, like late eighties. Hopefully you have like a really nice VHS collection and you're just watching the same movies over and over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so hopefully you have a good collection. 
Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I have taught to more people that I, and I'm like a lot of guys in the business. I'm sure you do. If somebody will say something, I'll be, oh, there's this great movie that reminds me of the scene, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I, and I have friends that aren't in the industry that I would do that with, and they're like, well, I don't watch that much TV or anything. Well, now, now they're the ones that are going. Oh man, have you caught this? You know, have you seen Ratchet? You know, on Netflix. If you're, you know, so, nope. so yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I think in a funny way, Netflix has, has, has probably uh, kept kept a lot of people from just going over the deep end. You know? Yeah, I mean, like once this thing hit, they put out Tiger King. <laughs> Everybody oh, was talking about Tiger King. Oh my God! Yeah, I that you know. That that's one of those things, and I don't know if you ever do this when you're when you're watching some of the stuff that's out there, and you're you're just looking at it, going, "Okay, are they that desperate for programming? Like, really?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, I I gotta. Yeah. I remember I said to my partner, I said, I said, have you seen this crap? I said, we got to hurry up and get this done. I said, they're evidently really, really desperate, you know. <laughs> so. But at the same time, you know, as at the, at the same time, there was this documentary filmmaker that was trying to do a documentary on that that one guy, and this shit just mm. blew up on him. It just it just started expounding, expanding, um, compounding, just building as a filmmaker. I would have I would have to run with it. I would have to. Like you can't not show it. Um, it's, it's almost it's it's like a train wreck you don't want to watch, but you have to. But you have to. You have yeah. to show it. You have to show the world. And yeah. and and now I think because of this documentary, so a, a few more investigations are now happening. See, that's the mm-hmm. plus side. You know, is that maybe investigations are being taken seriously where they maybe they weren't. So, mm-hmm. but um. It's funny how that can occur because there's there's a little little zoo that's similar to that one in Tiger King, mm-hmm. uh, not not too far from where I am. Uh, and actually, as a result of that show, I know they've been really monitoring them more closely. So, mm-hmm. I, I, and I really I, I love animals. What was funny? I always joke I'm, I'm allergic to everything with fur. Uh, you know, but but I'm that guy too. That it's like you know, if if there's a cat, it's it's gonna try to get right in my face and purring and and not. so I, uh, I I think that is one really cool thing. I agree with you totally that that show did is it's brought a lot of awareness uh, to what yeah. what goes on out there. So uh, you know, it's it's cool when art can have that effect. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you touched upon. Uh, common sense and 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 wearing masks. Is there is there another bit of advice? Last last bit of advice. Last point or two you'd want to make for our viewers. Uh, advice or point? Um, you know, I, I I think in general, just in don't don't forget when you're talking to somebody that might have a different opinion of you on this thing. You you don't really know how this has affected them. You know, uh, you you don't know what they're they're going through. You don't. I, I think if people would just instead of talking at each other, if they would start talking to each other, man, I think it'd just be a lot better world right now, dude. Yeah, yeah, and 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 like you said, common sense. There's been a few occasions where, you know, for me, I hear a lot of different reports, a lot of different insight about. COVID and coronavirus and, and, and catching it and surviving it and how serious it really can be. And to me personally, I don't care because I also have to look out for the wife and the kid. And so I say, listen, maybe I did, maybe I did get it. And it, it just went in and out of me. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I got to, I, I, in the last seven months, I had to get tested three times, came back negative all three times. Fantastic. But there's been a couple of occasions where, you know, I'm talking to somebody and they don't have their mask on. I'm like, can you put your mask on? They're like, and I'm like, bro, get, just get away from me then. Just get away from me because I, I, I've and, had the, I, no, go ahead. Oh, well, and, and I think that's a matter, again, it, it comes back to common sense, you know, um, because, and I mean, not just COVID, look, I don't want to catch the flu. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't, so, um, 
I think you're exactly right. It, it depends on the environment. And one thing I'm lucky about, and I'm always careful about giving away our locations because there's the good and the bad side of having a, a project kind of blow up. We, we, we've, had, we've had a few people who very much don't like what we're doing with Passion of the Gods, and they, they have expressed it in, in ways you would not believe. But uh, a nurse happens to own the property that we're on um, that's been a nurse for about 30 years, and she runs a, 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 a facility now. Um, so she's constantly getting uh, uh, memorandums and things from, from CDC. Um, so that's one cool thing that's helped me because it, it, there is so much information being thrown at people out there. When, I, when, when I'm not sure about something, it's really cool to have somebody like her that I can go to and just go, to her fault. <laughs> you know? Right. But what's, what's the deal? Um, and... and I, I think that's the hard thing and what you're talking about. These are all very personal decisions. And the only thing any of us can do is, is base our decisions on the knowledge that we have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the knowledge that we have and, and nine out of 10 experts say a mask would help prevent the spread. And so at the end of the freaking day, I, I look at it like this. Most people wear underwear before under their pants. <laughs> Most people wear socks inside their shoes, or their or, or their or, or their pants are going to get nasty. Their their shoes are going to get funky. So you wear socks inside the shoes. It's just another sock, man. You wear sunglasses when it's bright out. You can wear you can wear another sock on your face. And how where are you where are you going to wear whatever you know? It's, I, it's, and and I, so. I, that's hilarious that you said that about it. You know, we all wear socks or we all wear shoes, and there's, there's that old saying in showbiz. You know, look, we put our we put our pants on one leg at a time, like everybody else. But to to make an illustration of that, I actually used the rendering software, and I did kind of a mixed reality thing. So I, I literally had rendered myself like naked at the screen at the the gates to screen gems, and had up a peace sign, and then I had this caption on it, and I was like, we put on our pants just like uh, dot dot dot. Forget it. It, you know, and I was trying to make a point with humor, you know, it was like, look, it's like, this is not this hard, people. <laughs> you know, it's just right. not. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I think the sock analogy is very good. I mean, it's, but, you know, yeah. uh, I, I don't know, man, it, it's a crazy world we're in, dude. I mean, most people, you, you'd grab an umbrella. If it's torrential storm out, you'd grab an umbrella. Oh, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna grab I'm not gonna grab that umbrella because this rain is uh this rain is uh deterring my freedom and my rights. Bro, come on, man. Just you're gonna you are you're gonna you're gonna take the umbrella, you're gonna just wear the mask. And I mean that's the, the extreme the, the extreme thing I was talking about. And that that's the sad part is if if people would use some common sense, um uh, you know, maybe Big Brother would back off on some things a little bit. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, no shit. Infringing on my rights is what I meant to say. This rain is infringing yeah. on my rights, John. I'm not wearing this. I'm not wearing this. I'm, I'm not going to use this umbrella. You know, rain, talking about doing film and, and location and things, no, no, <laughs> rain, rain can sure as hell infringe on a damn schedule. You know? <laughs> but, that's and, different. That's <laughs> that's totally different. Do, but, I'm, I, but, you know, in a way, there is a similarity because COVID, you know, think of COVID like a hard-ass rain, man, you know, yeah. and, and, and you don't have a backup location, <laughs> you know? So. Well, but listen, this is it's nature. Rain's nature. Snow is nature. Wind is nature and COVID is just, a, it's, it's this natural evolution of, a, of whatever, whatever it came from, a multitude of flus and other viruses that somehow became this 19th concoction, COVID-19, you know, uh, coronavirus, whatever. It's just, just na nature, nature through a hard left. Mm -hmm. and and uh and and that's it and so just like you just like you're gonna wear snow boots you're not gonna wear flip-flops in the snow you know i love wearing I, i'm i'm 
I've been guilty of that, so I can't. I can't <laughs> All right, well, move, move, moving on. <laughs> you know, no, man. I, I'll tell you what's what's so funny with, with what you're saying, and and it really is. It, it's true. There, there's just people are not thinking, and I think the reason they're not thinking is they're afraid. Um, and the the thing is, I've never seen anybody make a good decision that was fear driven. Um, you know, if, if, if somebody can keep their head about them and, and maybe that goes back to the martial arts stuff, but you know, yeah, we're all going to get afraid at times, but how you use that fear, if you let that fear control you, you're going to lose. If, if you recognize the fear and go, okay, this is not a good situation. Yes, I'm afraid. What can I do to make this situation better? And, and that, and it, and, it, and it can be that simple. Yeah. Well, I think, I, I mean, I, I'll disagree to an extent. There have been good decisions made and made, made from fear, but maybe it's not, maybe it's not fear. Maybe it's, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's common sense. So you, you were, you're, you're mentioning martial arts. I mean, there's, there's training in martial arts. There's muscle memory in martial arts, just like with the military, uh, you know, in combat, I guarantee you nine out of 10 soldiers are scared shitless, but they trained for that situation. You know, right. you, you take Taekwondo, you know, take Taekwondo champion. Um, maybe, and I'm not, I, I don't want to speak for you, but maybe when you got on that mat, you were probably intimidated. But from um, training, from practice, or maybe you weren't. <laughs> it, it was nerves. I mean, there nerves. were definitely nerves. Um, but it was that I, I, I was one of those guys, though, I literally trained six hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's how I got where I got. Um, so I, I, was, I was always confident in my ability. But, yeah, there, there were nerves. I mean, there were times, you know, I would, I would walk out uh, – and especially we're talking 30 years ago plus you know um so the the weight classes and things were very different uh so you know uh I, if i walked out and suddenly you know i'm like i'm like five eight you know at that time when i was training away i would have buck 55 soaking wet with well, the weight class i was in went from 150 to 180 so if all of a sudden i'm looking at a 180 guy that's six foot two and he's got a ton more reach than i do and it's on um, you're kind of sizing up the situation going uh, yeah, th this one might hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so right. So thinking that, you know, that's, that is a level of fear. That is, that is that mm -hmm. fear. That is that fear factor saying, here's the situation, make mm -hmm. a decision. Uh, and, and so, but a you good decision, but, <laughs> but, 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 but a good decision was made right. with, with that fear factor you took that fear factor and you made a good decision out of it instead of like a bad decision would have been running and looking and, and, embar and like embarrassing yourself. Right. Now that, then my master, he, he was actually a, a Korean grandmaster that trained the Korean Rye Marines. I, I, I would have been in way worse shape than that tall guy. So <laughs> no, no, him definitely fear. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, great, great respect. But, but yeah, I, I, that that might have been too broad of a statement. Bad decisions out of fear, like what? If if you got like a, a rabid dog coming at your ass, like you know, fear making your ass turn around and run the other way, really good decision. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so um, yeah, I, I I think and and I think you zeroed in on it. I, I, I'm talking more in a sense of okay, if you're if you're sitting in your living room by yourself. Okay, um, you haven't been around anybody for weeks. You don't have COVID. You don't have, but something comes up on the news and you let that paralyze you with fear. Yeah. And then because of that, you go, oh, well, I'm going to blah, 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 blah. Or if you're the other guy going, well, that's infringing on my stuff. And it, it's those, those knee jerk reactions at times where no jerk is needed. Just sit back and think yeah. about it. Yeah. And I think that's where ignorance plays, plays a factor within that fear and but a lot of times, you know, I think those guys that think like, okay, wearing a mask is infringement. I think a lot of times these are folks with nothing else going on. Nothing else going it's, on. Uh, you know, it's an attention it's getter. Also, 
it's it's fascinating when you look at that whole thing from a legal perspective. I, I, I actually that was another thing. I, I got screwed over on so many contracts early on in my career. I, I actually ended up studying law and had a four point oh average in it. Um, and so from from a legal perspective on some of these things, like like for instance, what was what what's been happening with Australia. Um, international law, you can close your borders and say, hey, we're not going to let anybody in. Um, but typically, uh, it is against international law. Like, it's one reason there's been so many sanctions against, like, North Korea and different things. You, you cannot just hold an entire populace captive and go, nope, you can't get out. Um, so when you, when you look at some of it strictly from a legal perspective, okay, and legal has nothing to do with common sense at times, okay, actually more often than not, legal has very little to do with common sense. Um, but so you, you, you have certain laws and things that are, that are structured certain ways, um, and those laws were not necessarily structured for an event like this. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so there's uh, that, that's the hard part about that debate is because in some instances, um, yeah, it, it, it is it is an infringement against constitutional rights. Some of some of the things that some of the leaders in certain areas of our country have done, um, yeah. well, all over the world, um, were they necessary? That goes back to maybe if people had some common sense, it wouldn't have been so. I, I, it's, and, and I think that's what's so hard and it's cool because we're, we're having an intellectual conversation about this. I have seen very few people that can keep their heads talking about this because, and it literally, I, I went to a convenience store two days ago. Uh, somebody said something about this very thing to the store manager. Uh, and and I, I know one of the sweetest ladies and I saw her face going bright red and they were all of a sudden, boom. You know, uh, just an explosion, uh, and and I know I probably just clipped the audio real bad. That's all right. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's it, it's again, it, it's you 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 can't always look at it, and it's this new normal thing. What has been normal sometimes has to change. Um, yeah. So uh, in, in acceptance, you know, a lot of people, and, and look, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm not as young as I used to be. And I think the older we get, the less we like change. Um, so I, I think especially for some of the older people that I know, I, I think they've been some of the more radical ones about some of this. Um, you know, and then things kind of roll downhill because say if you have a patriarch or a matriarch in a family and they're, uh, and, and I'll put it this way, man, I, the, the area that I'm in, you know, I, I, if I start hearing banjos playing, I'm going to be calling for security, right? Um, so it, they're, they're, there's some pretty out there folks, you know, around. It's like, oh, man, if I, the government comes in and tries to, you know, I, I got this weapon and I got that weapon and I'm going, I'm ready for them. And I'm, and I'm just sitting there going, dude, breathe. <laughs> you know, it's just it's like breathe, man. Yeah. So I I don't know. It's 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 just this whole thing is insane. It really is, but but it's reality too. Yeah. But like you said, just breathe and relax, and 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 take a second to think about it instead of just getting paralyzed. I agree. Getting paralyzed with fear is what's going to cause the issues. But if you take a second, I mean, we're all quarantined, so you got plenty of time to just take a second. Point. Exactly. Take, take a minute. Take a take an hour. Take a day, and breathe and just relax and 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 you know meditate on it and uh, things of that nature. Well, John Raven, uh, this was this was an awesome, awesome podcast. This is great chat. I, I can't thank you enough for coming on. A lot of great stories, uh, a lot of great ideas, a uh, lot a lot of great sharing of creative. Uh, ideas, man. Um, any any last uh, any last plugs, links, socials you want to put out there? Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're easy to find on Facebook. Uh, the Passion of the Gods. Uh, we're we're on there. Uh, Passion of the Gods on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, my website's JohnRaven.rocks. We have the Passion of the Gods.com. Uh, 
So and that's it. Yeah, John Raven. So yeah, yeah check, check it out, man. Like uh, you know, hope hope the viewers will check it out and uh, you know drop drop us a note, say hello, and uh, we 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 try to say hi back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, yeah, that, that's the site looks the site looks wild, man. I, I love it, and uh, you know I like all things. Uh, extraordinary and, and outrageous and uh the, the site definitely you know makes me think of some of that old school dark stuff man so it's, it's very cool very creative uh john raven again um can't thank you enough for coming on um uh, learned a lot i continue to be inspired <laughs> um with every great guest i get on here so thanks thanks so much for coming on um to my viewers i hope i've earned the privilege of your time and viewership i know my guest has and until next time, you know what to do.